The Colombian government and the FARC have been at the negotiating table before. More than 15 years ago, then-President Andres Pastrana engaged in formal peace talks with the FARC. He even traveled and met with the group's leader in rebel-held territory. But after years of discussions, the talks failed amid continuing violence and other factors. We recently had the opportunity to sit down with President Pastrana. He shares his personal reflections of that time and tells us if the atmosphere in his country has changed enough to achieve lasting peace. President Pastrana, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you very much for the invitation. You initiated peace talks with the FARC more than 15 years ago. This was something that was very important to you. You spent years negotiating, talking to them uh, about a peace process. So what has it been like for you to watch what's happened over the years uh, when you were not successful? What has changed or maybe has not changed to allow well, I think there progress were, to happen? There were a lot, a lot of, of things that in the last 15 years uh, happened that changed really what, what what is happening today with the peace process. First of all, we create Plan Colombia. With Plan Colombia, we arm our army as never in the history of Colombia that gave President Uribe and President De Santos the opportunity to go after the guerrillas if they don't want to sit in a peace process. And that's what really happened. What happened is that Plan Colombia, you may say that sit in the table, the FARC today. So that was one of the huge achievements. Second, I think that many of the experience that we have in 1998 uh, were taken by President Santos, and I think it's go a step forward. But I think that our responsibility is to create the best scenario so that we could, could achieve a long-lasting peace in Colombia. And that is done by a consensus. We have back again the support of the international community. During the talks I start with the FARC, we had more than 30 countries on the table of negotiation supporting my process. Today, back again, the international community is backing President Santos, is backing Colombia in this process, and that's why we hope if we create this consensus that we could achieve a long-lasting peace in my country. Many people consider Plan Colombia successful. Do you think that you have played a part in the peace process, where it is today, the fact that maybe something will finally be achieved? No, I think that something is going to be achieved. But the peace process is not the end of violence in Colombia. That's one of the things. Because still we have to deal with two big problems. Still we have some paramilitary groups in our country, and those are involved also in the drug business. And we will still have to deal with narco-trafficking. You could achieve the peace process, but if the FARC, if they don't tell us Colombians the truth, it's going to be very difficult to end the narco-trafficking in our country. So that's why I think with, with the peace process of President Santos, we have a huge opportunity really to end with narco-trafficking in Colombia. So that's why we have to be very careful that one thing is going to be the peace process, but still Colombia needs to commit in the fight on narco-trafficking. Still, today, we are the largest producing country of coca in the world. And that's why we need still the help of the world. That was why Plan Colombia was created. I start Plan Colombia uh, with what I call the theory of co-responsibility. We, Colombia, we used to produce and we still are producing drugs, but the U.S. is the largest consuming country in the world. And Europe today is starting to be also the largest consumer countries in the world are located in, in Europe. That's why we not only need the help of the United States, but also the help of the Europeans in the fight against narco-trafficking. So despite the progress, you believe Plan Colombia should continue. How should it evolve to the situation uh, in Colombia today? I think that we need to continue Plan Colombia in, in which the way it was conceived. Why? Because basically Plan, Plan Colombia had, if I may say, three or four legs. One of them, it was the strength of our military to fight not only the guerrilla, but also narco-trafficking. Plan Colombia was created basically to go after the war on drugs. So that's why we strengthen our army as never in the history of our country. Second, the social side of Plan Colombia. Plan Colombia, we create, I think, the most important social plans that we have today in Colombia. One of them is called 
family in action that it's today benefiting, I think, that more than 2.5 million families in the country, giving support to the families for their children. So that was something that were, was very important. Plan Colombia, in Plan Colombia, we proposed a free trade agreement with the United States, was part of Plan Colombia. Now we have the free trade agreement with the, with the United States. And need, we need to get more involved if we achieve peace process in keeping the guerrilla that want to get back to the legal side of, uh, of uh, for example, uh, agriculture or uh, some of the micro uh, industries in Colombia, we need to have money to get these people back. And I think one of the most important thing is still eradicating drugs, alternative development in these areas, and investing in the people that want to stay. The FARC used to be and is still, I think, a rural group. Most of the people of the FARC today, you could have 10, 12,000 people of the FARC today, I think they want to return to agriculture, they want to return to their own cities, and I think that's where we need money to give these people the possibility to go back to the legal business that basically is going to be agriculture, protecting the environment, protecting our rainforest. I think there's a lot of opportunities. The perception of Colombia has changed. People want to visit, they're curious about Colombia. Perfect. No problem. I think that we have we deal. First of all, we had the problem of the violence, what I call narco-terrorism, that it was the violence of the cartels in Colombia. We have the two largest cartel in the world. We had the Medellin cartel and the Cali cartel. Even as you know, I was kidnapped by Pablo Escobar. I suffered personally the violence of my country. I'm the only survivor of, of, of Pablo Escobar. Everyone that Pablo Escobar kidnapped was killed. And I survived. And thank God I survived. I, I could do a lot of things for my country. I think that's over. We went out the largest cartel in the world. We fight them. We defeat them. Still, we have the problem. Still, Colombia is a producing country. That's why we need the help of the world. Do you think that the FARC has changed over the years? Well, it has changed for good and bad. For bad, I think that they were a Marxist, Leninist, guerrilla group, and now is the largest cartel of cocaine in the world. So I think that they gave up their ideology and they got involved in the largest business of the world, that is the drugs. There are reports that if a peace process is achieved with President Santos and the FARC, that they could be seen as potential winners of the Nobel Peace Prize. I don't think that you don't do a peace process to win a, a Nobel Peace Prize. You do the processes for the peace, not for the Nobel Peace Prize. You do a, you do a peace processes for your country. Uh, I don't think, as president, I cannot think that you start working for the peace, looking for a, for a prize. It doesn't matter what's the name of that prize. I think if you're achieving a peace processes for the benefit of your country and of your people, and that's what you need to think. Because if you're thinking on the peace prize, maybe you will give many things to the other group to try only to achieve peace. And that will be a huge mistake because you could achieve peace for one year or two years or three years, but you could not achieve a permanent peace in the country. And that's what you need to think. I'm gonna win a, a peace prize or I'm going to do peace that will benefit for my country. I think that is what you th need to think when you are president, president of a country as Colombia. President Andres Pastrana, thank you so much for being with us. Elaine, thank you very much.